Hi and welcome to another Protagonist Science video. My name is Philip, I am a scientist and today I want to talk about perception and reality. In a world where life is hectic and society moves fast, we have to hit the ground running or risk being left behind. Nobody can withstand the pull of their times, yet in our more quiet moments, when we pause and pay attention, we might still take in the sheer beauty of just being. The smell of fresh grass, the warm sun upon our skin, the richness of color and sound woven into the very fabric of reality. Experiencing life with all our senses makes us feel whole, it connects us with our surrounding, we become part of something bigger than ourselves. Above all, it makes us believe to truly grasp reality as it is. No computers, no digital interfaces, just raw analog reality. Which is surprising, because what science taught us is that we are effectively blind for most of our surroundings. This is everything our eyes will ever see of reality a small optical window into the wider electromagnetic world. A short stretch of oscillating photons released by the sun, swinging with just the right frequency so their wavelengths are not blocked by the Earth's atmosphere. Only these photons can reach down to the Earth's surface, only these get reflected, scattered or absorbed by physical objects, for example, the retinol in the photoreceptors of our eyes. One might even feel fortunate that we see the electromagnetic spectrum where it most counts, when light bounces off things in our immediate surroundings, making us aware of their presence. Similar arguments could be made for hearing, how we manage to hear precisely those frequencies we need in everyday life, but not ultrasonic like bats or infrasonic like whales. Truly, for any sense we have, we can find examples in nature or in technological instruments which show us the boundaries of our awareness, our small windows into reality, so to speak. Yet the size and shape of our perception windows are no coincidence. They were selected by the evolutionary struggle for survival, from countless formless ancestors up to the last hominids, our direct and human-like forebearers. Through that struggle, our senses evolved to perceive only those parts of reality which mattered for navigating existence, while blinding us for the rest. Sensing all, or even most of actual reality is just not necessary for survival, and might even be detrimental, depending on the environmental context and niche of the species. That's why our perception differs so much between us and other animals. That's why snakes can use heat vision to find prey in the dark, but have otherwise poor eyesight. Or why magnetoreception, the ability to sense the Earth's magnetic field, is common in migratory birds or fish, but not in more sedentary species like us. For many, these facts will not come as a surprise, after all, we can observe and experience the limitation of our senses. It is not difficult to concede that evolution had a major part in shaping the capabilities of our senses. Yet why would we assume that evolution left it at that? It is unlikely that our thinking, the way we process and interpret the signals our senses picked up from our surroundings, are not also somewhat bounded by evolution. After all, no matter what we see, smell, touch or hear, we do not get to experience it raw. Our senses are merely biological machines, detectors of force, energy or chemical molecules. Their sole purpose is to catch signals and propagate their information as electrochemical impulses via the central nervous system towards the brain. Our brain then filters,
processes and selects among these electrochemical impulses those it deems relevant before projecting the perception inputs onto the virtual user interface our brain constructed for our conscious consumption. If this feels a bit much to you, you are not alone. We can only consciously experience what our brain decided to present to us. And this is far from unmitigated reality. In fact, an argument can be made that much of the reality our conscious minds do actually experience is purely constructed by the brain. But this topic deserves a whole separate video. Here we want to explore some cognitive consequences of our evolutionary past. Whether what makes intuitive sense to us is more product of certain inbuilt biases and shortcuts rather than a reliable depiction of reality. Take magic. Magic is the art of making the impossible seem real. Yet the magic of, for example, optical illusions does not happen in the outside world or even our eyes. Optical illusions become real within our minds. Our brain automatically corrects for likely colors, shapes, shadows and depths based on expectation and intuition. And while many of these shortcuts and heuristics are learned when we were babies and toddlers exploring the world, the underlying hardware, these specialized brain regions doing the processing were shaped by evolution as well. How else could we explain a phenomena like akinetopsia, also known as motion blindness, which occurs when suffering damage to a specific region of the brain? People suffering from motion blindness have no problems with their eyes, they see perfect pictures of standstill objects. Yet once the objects move, they just vanish from their perception, which makes everyday things like crossing the street very dangerous. There is no question that our brain is full of specialized regions that evolution had a big part in shaping. But what does this all mean for us? Since our complex world and lived environment today is nothing like the one we evolved in, our biological hardware might be thoroughly under-equipped to deal with the realities of the modern world. We can observe these limitations in everyday life. Our brains struggle to make intuitive sense of the very big, the very small or the exponential. We see patterns where there are none. We believe in agency over coincidence. We judge and act fast with too little information. This is natural. This is who we are. Not because we cannot do better, but because for almost all of our history, this is what it took to survive. Our biology has not changed much in the last 40,000 years, but our world and environment has. The only thing we have going for us is that we are great apes capable of great learning. However, relying on our modern knowledge about the world is not enough. Scientific discoveries might have added enormously to our perception of reality, but not necessarily to our processing of it. This we all have to learn to do ourselves with the tools of logic, causal reasoning, skepticism and probability, among many others. Most importantly, however, is the need to develop a self-awareness that we are part of and subject to the very system we try to understand, our reality. This means that no matter who we are or what we do in this modern world, we all have to learn where and when we can trust our perception and intuition and where we are certainly wrong when we do so. For me, the realization that we are all blinded by evolution is profound. It makes me curious about the world out there, open to hear what other people have to share and humbled about the limitations of my own experience. 
I hope it will do the same to you.